Earlier today, a University of Cincinnati police officer was indicted on first degree murder charges in the shooting death of Samuel Du Bois. Over and over again, as I said in my last video, week by week we're going through these police brutality, these police shootings of unarmed black males. Now Samuel Du Bois was driving and was pulled over for having a, or not having a license plate in front of his car. When he was pulled over, the officer asked him why he didn't have a front license plate, and he told the officer he didn't know whether he needed to have it or whether it was illegal to have it. During this back and forth exchange, the officer continued to ask Mr. Du Bois, did he have a driver's license? And Mr. Du Bois told him, I don't have it on me, but you can clearly look me up. The officer asked Mr. Du Bois, did he have a warrant? Or was he driving on a revoked or suspended license? Mr. Du Bois told him he was not driving on a suspended license to so just go look him up. Now the officer reaches and tries to open up Mr. Du Bois' door. And at this point, Mr. Du Bois says, hey, I'm pulling off, I ain't about to go through this. And the police officer pulls out his weapon and fires one shot into Mr. Du Bois' head, in the back of his head. Mr. Du Bois died, pronounced dead at the scene. Now, this police officer was running around, going crazy, acting like shots fired as if someone fired at him when he was the one doing the firing. Over and over again, we go through this in the black community with we getting pulled over and the police officers being overly aggressive with the African-American people who they're pulling over. Now, earlier today, I was having a conversation on Facebook with a white gentleman and he specifically said to me, that the reason why cops are the way they are is because they look at the true crime statistics of the prison population. I told him, just because the black people are in jail, that does not mean we're the only ones who commit crimes. That just means we're the ones getting caught. In a country where the majority of the residents are white, but the majority of the prison population is black, that only means one of two things. The main thing it means is that the white people are not getting pulled over at the same rate we're getting pulled over. Simple example, if you go to traffic court in any of these American cities, you see more than any other race, African Americans, more than Hispanics, more than whites, more than Asians. Now what you're telling me is that black people have expired tags, revoked license, speedings, they get DUIs more than any other race? No, that just means that black people are suspected of doing these things more than anybody. We're pulled over of these things more than anybody. When I guarantee you in most of these American cities, white boys, white girls, White Americans are riding around with more drugs or are higher than African Americans, but they're just not getting pulled over to begin with. That's why the prison population is full of African Americans. That's a fact. Nobody wants to accept that. At least white America doesn't. And at this particular time now, with Samuel Du Bois getting gunned down, with Sandra Bland hanging herself in prison, as they say, in this country, if you're African American, you cannot win for losing. If you get pulled over and you do exactly what they tell you to do and you do not get a ticket, you leave thinking, what just happened? I didn't get a ticket, so what did they pull me over for? Was it because I was black? Was it because I had red hair? Was it because my music was playing? There's so many questions. But then if you get a little irate and you get arrested, you just may die in prison or you get a criminal record for something that you're just trying to figure out what's going on. And that's what's happening with African Americans. That's why we're so frustrated. On these blogs, you constantly hear them saying that if we didn't show so much attitude, if we showed more respect for the law, then these things wouldn't happen. But I beg to differ. We're showing so much attitude because we know over and over again these things are happening because we're being profiled. As a young man, I was pulled over at least 10 times without a single ticket. I was having a discussion with someone on a blog and he told me in a specific town in North Carolina that he, as a white man, doesn't drive through there at certain times of the day. So you telling me that in 2015, I shouldn't drive around a certain town or a certain time of day because I may get pulled over? There are no more sundown towns. I will drive through what town, when I want to drive through it, and what time I want to drive through it. And if I can't, then that cop who pulls me is going to catch pure hell for me. I know as African Americans, we want to think that everything can be all kumbaya. I know as African Americans, we want to think that we can sit down with these officers or sit down with these city leaders or sit down with these politicians and get them to understand the strife that we go through. But I'm a firm believer that they already know what we go through. They already know the difficulties we face on a day-to-day -day basis. As African Americans, we have to start standing up and voicing our opinion when it matters, every time it matters. I saw a news story the other day where an African American man was pulled over in a country town in North Carolina and he was pulled over and pulled out of his vehicle because he was black and driving a Corvette. The officers made him walk to the back of his vehicle, get on his knees while they ran through his vehicle and searched any and everything in his car. Now he called the news and said he wanted an apology. The news reported the story and they ran through statistics. They said in most cases where officers search African American vehicles, the number where they actually find anything is so low that it's not enough to be documented. That means that they're just running through these cars, search fending and everything, tearing property up, and then saying, have a good day. Now, White America once again says this story was slanted, that the news station was race baiting. And I say to myself, what was he supposed to do? It's not enough anymore to go home and talk to your friends about it. It's not enough anymore to talk to your mom about it. It's not enough anymore to go home, sit in the corner and ask why. 
from this moment on, we have to make noise. We have to call every local news station, every radio station, whenever an injustice is done to us, whether it's publicized or not. I've learned to accept what's going on, but I tell you what, I won't deal with it. Anytime something happens to my family or in my community or anywhere I travel, I'm gonna make a video on it. I'm gonna call it out. And if white America doesn't wanna hear it, you better turn it off. Anytime somebody holds up a mirror to white America, white America runs and hides because they don't like what they see, but they don't hate it enough to change it. And today, I'm gonna make sure you change it. They wanna continue to live in their racist bubble while they sit back and they act like they know what's best for any and everybody except white America. Real talk.